Amino acids are a type of organic molecules which are characterized for being an amino group and a carboxyl group bonded to the same alpha carbon. Both of these groups are ionized, and this alpha carbon is also bonded to a single hydrogen and an R group. This R group can be one of 20 different substituents that constitute the 20 different amino acids that exist. All amino acids share the same basic structure. In proteins, function is determined by their form and geometry. So it's important to have accurate representations for them in order for us to study them. So here we have three different representations of the same amino acid. Here we have a two-dimensional representation in which each atom is represented by its letter, for example, C for carbon, H for hi hydrogen, and for nitrogen, O for oxygen. But, oh, and the lines represent the, the bonds. But this representation is not an accurate representation of how a molecule would look in 3D. So in order to show how uh, the molecule will have depth, we have to use a little bit of our imagination. So the bonds, here the thick ones, represent a plane that is closer to the observer, and the discontinuous lines represent a plane that is further from the observer. So in this case, we would have this amino group and this hydrogen closer to the observer, we would have the alpha carbon in the middle, and then furthest from the observer, we would have the carboxyl group and the R group. The normal lines here represent uh, the bonds of between atoms which are in the same plane with each other. Here in representation B, we have a ball and stick representation, where the bonds are the sticks and the balls are the atoms. Here we have the oxygen in red, the nitrogen in blue, and the hydrogen in lightly blue or sometimes white. Here the carbon is in black, but not all the, always the carbon is represented in, white, in black. So how do we know when a carbon is a carbon? Well, they're usually the most common atoms in this type of molecules. And also, let's remember that carbons have sp3 hyd hybrid orbitals. This means that a single carbon can have four different co covalent bonds with four different molecules, each of them equal distance from each other, giving us a tetrahedral geometry. Sometimes the, uh, a carbon can make a double bond, for example, with this oxygen, so we find a different type of geometry here. And lastly, we have here the uh, e representation C, a spheric representation, in which each sphere represents the van der Waal radius, the radius in which we are most likely to find the electrons. This is the most accurate type of representation that shows us the true volume of a molecule. Amino acids are ionizable molecules. This means that they have two groups, as we saw before, the amino group and the, carbox, uh, the carboxyl group, which can be ionized. In the case of the amino group, when it gains a proton, it can, it can gain a proton and have a positive charge, and the carboxyl group can lose a proton and have a negative charge. The different groups can either give or receive protons based on their characteristics, like their geometry. And the ionization depends on the pKa of the molecule. So, different forms can be found at different pHs. This non-ionic form cannot be found normally. Um, so, normally at the physiological pH, we would have this sphiterionic form. This is the normal form in which we find amino acids in the body or in cells. All 20 amino acids have different characteristics based on their R substituents. We can use these different characteristics to classify them. For example, here we have the positively charged R groups. These are amino acids with an extra amino group in their R substituent, which grants them an overall positive charge. These are lysine, arginine, and histidine. So if we have the positive charged ones, we can have the negatively charged ones. These are the two amino acids with which have an overall negative charge given to them because of their carboxyl group in their R substituents. These are aspartate and glutamate. Next, we have the polar and charged R groups. A polar molecule is a molecule with an, with an unequal distribution of electrons in the bonds between the atoms that form the molecule. So, here between the electronegative oxygen and the carbon, 
the oxygen pulls a little bit more the electron so they spend a little bit more time here and a little bit less time here this grants uh, this side of the molecule with a slightly negative charge and this side of the molecule with a slightly positive charge however the overall charge of the molecule remains the same the electronegative atoms that grant polarity to these molecules are oxygen sulfur and nitrogen as we can see here in proline we see that there is no electronegative atom in its R group however it forms a bond with the amino group so this bond grants the whole molecule with polarity uh, the amino acids are serine threonine cysteine proline asparagine and glutamine here we have the nonpolar aliphatic R groups these are the amino acids which, which form aliphatic chains and are responsible for the hydrophobic interactions. They minimize the area of exposure to the solvent and are very important in the first steps of protein folding. These are glycine, alanine, valine, leucine, methionine and isoleucine. Methionine has a non-reactive uh, sulfur here hidden uh, between two carbons and it's usually the first amino acid in a protein. That's because usually the cations that start protein synthesis include the carbon for methionine. And lastly, we have the aromatic R groups. These are the amino acids that form rings in their R group. Here we have phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. These aromatic, uh, aromatic rings are called uh, Benson rings. And you can see here that the, the electrons here form a double bond between these carbons, a double bond and a double bond. But these electrons might make a double bond with these carbons, with these carbons and between these carbons. And they tend to bounce around. So in one moment in time, we can find it like this. And in an, the next moment in time, we can find double bonds here, here and here. This is called resonance. These amino acids are usually part of the core of the protein since these rings make them to have a rather big volume. Now, there are different ways to classify the amino acids different from the classification that we just saw. So here in this Venn diagram, we can see a very accurate classification of the amino acids. For example, here histidine is a positively charged, aromatic, polar, big amino acid, where it's basically the only amino acid in that classification so a very accurate very precise type of classification it's pretty useless it really helps us in no way so we are usually going to use this type of classification that we find in books rather than this rather accurate but fairly useless classification but that's not it amino acids can be modified past protein synthesis these are called post-translation modifications, and they are modifications performed by enzymes on the ionizable groups of some amino acids. This can be really simple modifications or really complex modifications that happened, but they're still really important to know.